Hello and welcome to Be Abundant Now, where evolution is the new revolution. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing uh, some of my challenges and my journey of disempowerment. Um, what I've been um, in the process of discovering on this journey, uh, that one of my, we all, I believe we all come into this reality, first of all, with soul contracts or some set of challenges that we are to overcome during this uh, life cycle. And for me, uh, those two challenges that the very core of who I am are disempowerment, severe disempowerment, and I'll go into that in, in a few moments, and um, learning to balance the emotional body. That has been um, like on this path that has been at the core of my healing process. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little, go into a little bit about what that involves. Um, when I talk about disempowerment, in my case, I was disempowered before I even took my first breath of air in this experience. Um, it was revealed to me at the age of 12 that my parents tried unsuccessfully to end and terminate my mother's pregnancy. Um, for and for me, I learned I learned this, and for me, it was just more of a confirmation than it was like any kind of big revelation because I never felt really uh, loved or you know I felt rejected by them um, in the early part of my life. Anyways, um, but I also at the same time, being an adult, I've been able to heal that, and we have to realize that everyone is operating from their own level of consciousness at that time. And everyone comes into this experience with their own baggage. So, but that set like the course and the pace, you know, for my life. Um, later I experienced further disempowerment through uh, sexual abuse, um, which le led me to a whole nother um, list of experiences that further uh, reinforced all of this disempowerment and um, because of, you know, early, whatever goes on, like either whether it was in this, if you subscribe to the belief of, you know, previous reincarnations or even during early childhood development during this incarnation, um, I grew up with a lot of domestic violence and there was a lot of alcoholism and a lot of, uh, you know, just a lot of chaos. And so what happens is we tend to um, try to, we tend to attract um, partners as adults that kind of fit into these molds so because that's at the core but once we start to look at ourselves and we can heal that um, that begins to shift and change the outer experience um, so this is why you know and that's what um, this journey has been it has taught me through relationships all of the lessons the soul lessons and to expand you know who I am to come into this place of balance. And these were some very, very um, painful experiences, but they were very necessary on this journey. And I'm finally, you know, coming more and more into balance every day. Um, I'm also known uh, in today's energy as the wounded healer. Now the wounded healer um, is someone, it's an archetype uh, that the medicine comes from his own wounds. So whatever process that I'm being used, that I have used on this journey to get me into this e sense of emotional balance, is what I'm going to share. Um, so if, any, if other people are attracted to this video, this may be something that um, resonates. And you know, always, you know, because because someone cannot, another human being cannot heal you. Um, but what we can do is kind of influence one another um, and connect with the higher self or higher forms of consciousness. And what I'm telling you may not resonate, but um, I, you know, I will like list different videos and various uh, videos or whatever that I create. And that may or may not resonate with you. However, while you're looking up something that I may suggest, you may find in the suggestion columns like on YouTube or you know even through going through the internet you may find something that resonates more with you on a soul level and that's your path so we're all here to kind of just help one another um, inspire one another the word inspire 
actually means in spirit. So when we are in, when we inspire others or we are inspired ourselves, we are communicating on a deep spiritual level. And one of my intentions on this journey is to inspire as much as I have been inspired. And I guess that also, um, you know, takes me back to when I was very young. You know, a lot of what who we are as an adult really is like who who were you as like a child what what did you like to do because for me um i've been on this planet over five decades now and i still like to do the same things i did when i was five years old i mean um spend time in nature at that time um i i referred to these people as like uh they were considered my imaginary friends well I'm beginning to realize that they were never really my imaginary friends, that they were actually angels and guides that have been with me my whole experience um, in this 3D reality. And so um, I'm still doing the same thing. I still love art as, I, as much as any five-year-old kid. And that was another thing that um, was part of my journey. You know, um, some of us were on, this, on this spiritual path, some of us start from, and this, I just came to this realization recently too, because I always thought you had to go inward and then work out, work out, work out. Some of us do start from the outside in, and that's what I'm coming to this realization because I've always been um, artistically inclined, and this is how I connected with God at a very early age. I've always said that I could draw before I could walk, and that came from the level of chaos and violence and just you know the uncertainty in my world at a very young age this is how I could connect with God and I could just sit there and draw and no matter what was going on in the external world I was calm I was in the zone I was in my own element so I've been doing this for years throughout my life um, and then you know um, throughout my life I was recognized for my artistic abilities and, you know, you think it's just, you know, family members, friends, you know, maybe a few teachers in school. <clears throat> I never really believed it until after I was, like, um, well into my adulthood. And actually people with a background in art started telling me uh, that I had, you know, all this artistic abilities. And so what I was able to lack in formal art education, I made up in, uh, in practical application. I've donated over 100 paintings. Um, to NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness. I donated a, a painting to our local library. Um, and just giving back, you know, to the community. And that, you know, and that gave me a sense of purpose and made me feel good. And also, um, really, <laughs> it really improved my artistic qualities. And so I'm very, very thankful for that whole experience. Um, and then there were a lot of people in my external reality telling me, you know, you could be a working artist and you know, and all these things, and I started kind of chasing it for the wrong reasons, you know. Um, also, I have this programming from when I was very young of telling me, you know, uh, if you're going to be an artist, you're always going to be broke, and, you know, things like that, and that gets put in your subconscious mind. But um, recently, like even just today, um, the way I, I started um, examining the way that I work, and you know, and, and there are two words, and it really it's more the way I play. I don't work when I create art. I'm not working. I'm I'm playing because um, a lot of you know there have been people that say, oh, you can make a work it. You could be you know a working artist. But the thing of it is, for me, I don't really believe that there's two words that don't belong in the same sentence. Work and art. I don't I don't work at art. I play. And um, when I create art, I generally work on six or eight paintings or pieces at a time. And what I just came to realize, like, is today. Because I'm wondering, how does all this fit together? I create jewelry, you know, that was part of my journey with my daughter. You know, I create art. And I also do, you know, this spiritual thing. How is this all interconnected? And it, today, it's finally starting to click. The last time, um, generally, like I said, when I create art, I create, like, um, five... I create like maybe six to eight pieces at a time. These are generally like the eight by tens. So I'm going to go and show you like some of my some of my uh, last pieces, and I'm going to give you my interpretation because what I'm recognizing now that these are all 
these are all like a story. This is the way God Source Universe is speaking to me. And so um, this painting here has a lot to do with full moon cycles. Um, all of this psychic energy and awareness is present during these full moon cycles. And this is generally a time when we are releasing things. Also, there may be th some things that are hidden that are going to come into light. Also, this is about facing our fears. So, you know, anyone who's familiar with the moon card. Um, also, this takes place, um, this could take place anytime between the fall and the winter because um, this tree is barren and this could be um, remnants of snow. So, um, there is something coming in. I'm looking at, because I just painted, this was the like the last little series that I did. And um, I think I did it probably in October. So this could be taking place between now and during the um, the end of the 2020 cycle ending. So <clears throat> this brings us, you know, through releasing all of these things, these are bringing us to a new level of ascension. And also um, as a twin flame message, this is about uh, people, um, those, those twin flames, um, really connecting in the ether realm. And there's new levels of consciousness coming in, um, you know, for, for the human race, you know, uh, bringing us to a new level of understanding. We have these golden rays of Christ consciousness coming in um, and a lot of uh, green healing energy, which brings us all of this energy coming down into the earthly plane. Um, into this 3D, you know, bringing all of this cosmic divine energy forth, opening up our heart space, more empowerment, energies, healing. This this blue resonates with me as, because um, it's almost between an indigo and a blue, deep level of communication, even psychic, psychic communication, you know, with the angelic divine realms. This rooster, believe it or not, the rooster, and I didn't realize this and I didn't know until recently, the rooster is representative of Christ. This is all about resurrection and rebirth. That's what a rooster, and I had no idea when I painted a rooster that that was the significant meaning. And it was just something that I wanted to paint. And I used a lot of gold. Again, this is the golden ray of Christ consciousness. This is all unconditional love that is coming down onto this planet. And... <clears throat> So uh, once I, you know, I'm starting to understand this a little bit on a deeper spiritual, soulful level. Um, there was another painting that I sold that was in, that was part of this process. Uh, it was an elephant, and the elephant is all about temperance and strength and the ability to clear our path and uh, move away blockages and um, just overcome obstacles. So that was also, so those, those are energies that are present, and I believe that they're energies that are present not only within my experience, but for the collective and whoever is resonating with my videos. Which brings me to like this last painting here. This is all about the spring, but look at all this yellow. This is full empowerment. This is really having that, that full solar plexus chakra opened. And all of these daisies are representing um, purity, innocence, a brand new beginning, um, and green, you know, with this healing energy that's present. There's always this underlying healing energy of the divine present in our everyday lives if we choose to uh, tap into that. Um, so that's part of this message that, you know, I wanted to share uh, today. And... I am a, a, a light worker of transmutation and it began with the working with the violet flame of Saint Germain and then I used something called an infinity healing. This is a healing modality and it's about giving your sacred yes and it somehow shifts your consciousness. That was very effective um, but the work that I'm currently using right now um, and these are just things, I, I still work with the Violet Flame of St. Germain during meditations. Uh, but what I'm working with more right now is something called clearing work. And I'm not exactly sure of how it works. It's about um, 
Michael Golson is a facilitator on YouTube and he facilitates these clearings and there's a lot of free on his channel you know you're free to go there and try it I'm just sharing with you what has worked for me it may not work for you I don't know but um, I'm open to different types of healing modalities and this has been the most effective I've been working with this for like a couple of years and I'm starting to finally now coming to more of my own authenticity and shedding all of these layers of disempowerment to really embrace who I am authentically. So it's been really um, key in this, in this process and on this journey. So I'm going to go ahead and put that below. I also have a link to my Etsy store down there if anybody is interested. Like I said, part of my um, journey through healing also involved um, some family healing work and me and my daughter um, worked together um, creating a lot of healing dip jewelry and a lot of the boho jewelry. So I've always been artistic and creative in that sense and um, Spirit has been really working closely with me since 2017. It was then that I realized that I was on a twin flame journey. Uh, I had no idea what a twin flame was and then it uh, and my twin flame, the person I recognized as my divine counterpart, started showing up in my dreams for almost two weeks straight. And I said this in another video, and just because someone starts showing up in your dream space doesn't mean that they necessarily want to have that contact or any kind of um, experience with you in the 3D. And, you know, we have to re respect that everyone is a free and sovereign being, and we all have choices in this world, and we can choose to do it, you know, whatever we want so um, and what I want to touch on that in the twin flame community right now is uh, I feel like there is a certain percentage of the collective that is actually doing this inner sacred sexual healing this inner womb type work if you're the divine feminine or just healing this um, sacral energy and this is like part of the final closing um, to really tie up all these karmic loops I do believe that there was an energy of this like sexual enslavement on this planet that um, you know that you know um, allowed us to objectify one another without looking at a, a human being as the whole human being uh, and part of that experience um, you know and part of what I'm seeing being reflected back to me to confirm this is with the divine masculine there's this whole trend that i've noticed has been going on for a couple of years the whole um no porn no fap type of um, energy and so and that this is about the divine masculine taking back his true power and and learning not to be a slave to that intense uh sex drive and sexual nature and this is about the divine feminine learning to really step into her own intuitive psychic power and recognize that she does not have to be objectified and looked at as a, um, you know as a sex like type of object or a plaything which has been playing out for like thousands of years now so that too is coming into a close and this is about bringing emotional balance um, recognizing that we were that we are um, different but we're also equal you know in the sense that we are all free and sovereign beings and uh, bringing those energies those energies into balance within ourselves I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a couple of energies because I'm being prompted to do so um, and just give you an idea and take take whatever resonates from these messages and leave what doesn't so this is from the soulful oracle deck. This is the deck that I created. So, Archangel Spirit Guides, what message would you like me to share? Please give me extreme clarity and insight. There we go. Archangel Michael, Life Purpose, Sword of Truth and Clarity. I hope you can see that. Uh, so, know, to, know that Archangel Michael is you know with you on your path if you I you know identify with the archangels um, and he does swing the the 
If you ask him to swing his uh, sword of truth and clarity and cut away all falsehoods and illuminate your path, that's what he do. He, he does. That is the angel, the archangel of um, guiding us on our journey to assist us in stepping into uh, power. This is from the Power of Surrender deck. Archangel Spirit Guides, what message would you like me to share today? Illuminate our path and show us the way. Surrender to obsessive thinking. If you are obsessing about a person or a situation, turn the dilemma over to spirit. Doing so will help you bring clarity or even solve the problem. So for some of you, um, this might be an issue, you know, we can get into our heads. Um, a lot of what this whole new um, rise in collective consciousness is about is learning to let go of the egoic mind and stepping in fully into that heart space uh, and operating from fully from the heart. This is from the Mirror of Truth. The sun card very beautiful energies coming in because when we surrender to things that no longer serve us whether they're ideas patterns um, behaviors emotions um, and allowing ourselves to feel our emotions you know um, <clears throat> and just kind of let them like rinse through us you know without blocking them because that's that's how we get mentally blocked too on this journey and this is all about a three so this is divinely guided it's one for a new beginning it's an ace it's also an ace it's a new beginning there's there's a lot of sun energy and again we have um, this orange and yellow energy this is the healing of the sacral chakra opening up that solar plexus chakra so that we can come into full balance within ourselves this is the power thought cards by Louise Hayes Archangel Spirit Guides, what messages do you have today? What would you like me to share with everyone? Okay, I see clearly. So some of you are giving um, extreme clarity in this situation. Look at again, coming into your own power, healing, done a lot of healing work. This purple speaks to me as um, a lot of psychic connection and connection to spirit. And it's saying, I willingly forgive, I breathe love into my vision, and I see with compassion and understanding. My clear insight is reflected in my outer sight. So, as within, so without. And look at all that purple. So, definitely, definitely coming into a sense of clarity. A lot of you will be seeing clearly and your purpose on this journey I'm gonna go ahead and close out this video with this little me this message from postcards from the spirit by Colette Baron Reed Archangel spirit guides Guide me, show me the path, illuminate the path. Okay, here we go. And it's saying, it says, Dearest you, let us ask you, are you looking for happiness outside of your everyday, moment-to-moment -moment experience, thinking you will find happiness out there someday? So many go chasing a magic it out there, but it can never be found there. So we want you to, we want to share a secret that you should that shouldn't be a secret you are pure joy what you made what made you is pure joy and every time you wake up and even when you sleep you have joy waiting to be expressed inside of you joy and happiness and, and fullness come from doing joy being joy knowing it cultivating it and lighting it in your heart so you can share it you must know this so when the time comes you will fully free 
you'll be fully free and your joyful being and actions will turn you into a beacon of starlight. Look within and be joyful, even for the tears and loss, for they mean that you have lived, really lived, jump into it all and love every minute. We all love you like crazy over here. So beautiful um, conclusion in this. Um, and really that can be, some of the secrets can be just connecting to your inner child. You know, what was it that you liked to do when you were a kid? Because chances are uh, you're still that person. So, well, thank you so much. Have an amazing, beautiful day. Love and infinite bless. Love and infinite blessings. And until next time.